Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, August 11th. We're very glad you're with us for our LinkedIn presentation today. For those people who are on Zoom, uh, if you have questions throughout this presentation, please just open up the chat box and enter questions in the chat box. For those people on Facebook, if you will, just put your comments or your questions into the comment box. I am monitoring that feed. Uh, for those people on Zoom, uh, there's a couple different options. There's a speaker view and a gallery view. Uh, we ask that uh, you go to speaker view, which looks like what's in the lower left-hand corner. And where that red arrow is, there's a couple of white lines or you can drag that back and forth and you can make your make the presenter bigger or smaller in the screen, whatever proportion makes it look best for you. Please note that this event is recorded, being recorded. It's currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to see in the future by participating in this event. And if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. I founded Career DFW back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the DFW area. In 2012, I started CareerUSA.org after a visit to the White House and finding out that there really wasn't anybody else doing what I was doing anywhere else in the country. Since 2007, I facilitate and lead the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, and I'll tell you about our programming at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. We have three great speakers who join us for LinkedIn Tuesdays, Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky, and actually next week I'm going to be filling in so I'll be the fourth speaker. And the reason we have three or four different speakers is because everybody looks at LinkedIn from a little bit different avenue. To really learn everything you need about learn LinkedIn, could, you'd spend hours and hours hearing all the little details. So hopefully you pick up a few nuggets and you pick up different nuggets from different people as we go through these sessions. So today, Locke Alderson is going to be our speaker. He's going to talk about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies to get results. So Locke, thank you very much for being with us and take it away. Locke, you're muted. There you go. Now you're good. Okay. Jeff, I'm at a loss. Uh, you should be good. I mean, you need to put that in presenter mode. Just my screen is being paused. Well, you're good here. Oops. Try to share your screen again. Well, I think we've lost Locke. Let's see if he comes back into the meeting here. There he is. Okay. Okay, I've made you a co-host, so you should be able to share again. Well, my name is Locke Alderson. I am a, re a retired recruiter. I retired in, at the end of 2011 after about 42 years in recruiting and HR. I started working with those in career transition in 2001. They've continued to do that until last year. I was with Mullen International. 
out of New York in 2013 and with them for, for four years. And they were sold out to Lee Heck Harrison. Lee Heck Harrison, I mean, uh, Mullen laid everybody off and I joined Lee Heck Harrison. Well, that's my bio up there. Anybody who would like the full presentation, the whole full slide deck, in addition to being available on careerdfw.org, on YouTube, and on the, uh, what's the other group? On YouTube and on, say YouTube channel. on Facebook. If you send me an email to lockholders at Gmail, I'll send you the slide deck. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Again, LinkedIn started out as a networking tool for sales and marketing people. Recruiters found it and started using it as a recruiting tool and is now the number one recruiting tool that hiring managers and recruiters use to find candidates. So it's very helpful in that regard. Um, there are over 500 million people on that. Although Jeff, I think your statistics have come up with 650 million, but of those about 138 million are here in the United States. If you're not on LinkedIn, you can sign up and go to YouTube and here's a sign up that you can do for that. So we'll move on to the next slide. Again, this starts, it all starts with your profile and that's what LinkedIn calls your, basically your resume. If you notice a number of things about the resume that are the profile are there, there's my headshot, there's a background photo, there's my name, and then after under that, there's a headline. That headline is, allows you to spend 120 characters if you don't put anything there at all, it will default to the last job title in your employment section. The other things that are open, you notice it's open to job opportunities. When you originally set that up, set up your account, it will allow you to do that over in the settings area. If you haven't done it, we'll, we'll do that. If you have already set it up, you can change that by moving to the blue pencil that you see right there. And you notice the job opportunities that I have, it will display five, and you can set those and change those at any time. And you can see all the details that are as well. I've opened it up on this slide to just recruiters. Again, you can open it up to all of LinkedIn so that they can see your, your job opportunities that you're looking for. The other things that you'll notice, selfies are okay in terms of the profile, profile picture. Again, you wanna make sure that you've got a good clean background and that you're smiling and that they're, you're not wearing clash clothes that clash. Again, the 120 characters for your headline and the job opportunities section is available to you and you can have up to five. And then there's a featured section as well. But we'll move on to the next one. Again, LinkedIn is based on a ranking of the things that you put into your profile. Each section has a different ranking. They're all headed up and when someone does a search, those are the criteria that are used for the search. The first thing is to complete your headline. Or complete your, also complete your profile to achieve a, a, an all-star status. You want to have a professional headshot and you can also add a background shot. Those background shots, you can Google and find background shots that are appropriate. You can do something like a Wordle. If you look Jeff up, Jeff's got a Wordle of his, his resume on, on his profile background. There are other things that you can do and others have very creative ones like that. The headline is usually the position title that you're applying for. So you don't want the last job title that you have unless that's exactly what you're looking for at your former or current company. You're open to job opportunities and that's in the settings section. That's one of the criteria as well. The about section used to be the summary section, basically is an overview of your career with keywords from your profession. Again, you have about 2000 characters to play with there, although some of the later versions of LinkedIn have narrowed that down to probably a thousand characters. You want your contact information in a number of places. It's there on your, in your profile on your homepage when it opens up, but I also, encourage you to put it in the first two lines of your about section. Reason being, the more clicks somebody has to try and find out how to reach you, the more likely they are that they're gonna move on to the next candidate. The experience section, your job title, should have your job title and the company name and a description of your duties along with keywords from your profession, probably some accomplishments from your career. If you had an unusual job title, something like member of career staff three, uh, then you want to explain what that is and use a generic term that's used in industry. It's easier for recruiters and other people to identify with what you are if they understand what you do. You want your education awards and certifications and professional development. I emphasize the professional development because many of the profiles that I looked at in terms of the education, they simply state that they have a degree or have a high school diploma. They don't say what they've done to keep their skills current. And that's vitally important when a recruiter is looking over your profile. 
Your skills from your press are also very important and any endorsements that you have. People can endorse you. I looked at somebody's profile this morning while he was helping me set up my VOIP system. And we looked at his, his profile. We were waiting for the contact back from Manila. It was one of those delayed contact kinds of things. We looked at his profile and he hadn't updated his, his profile for six years. But you can endorse the things that people have done in skills as well. And then recommendations. These are like letters of reference. They're, they're very valuable. They can add to your credentials and people can look at them without having to send letters of reference or make phone calls for people. Let's take a look further down on your profile. There's something called your dashboard. You notice there's a couple of things there. Who's viewed your profile in the last 90 days, the posting views and the number of times you've appeared in a search. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you to know about the searches that you've appeared in, what that means. So let's take a look. If I clicked on that 160, it would give us, oh, excuse me, there's something else on this screen. There's the featured section and, and I have in my featured section all of the pro profile, I mean, all of the LinkedIn presentations that I've done, as well as several others, like avoiding the resume black hole. And you can post your pro portfolio if you're a designer or a graphics designer or something like that, as well so that people can see what you've done. But if we clicked on your search appearances, that 160 that I mentioned, it'll show the career, the words that recruiters have used to find you, as well as the companies that they work for. So you can see that. I know I looked at mine briefly this morning. And only a couple of them were from HR. Many of the people that appeared there on my, when I did that this morning with this gentleman I was working with, it showed up that they were looking for a recruiter to find a, help them find a job. Here are some sample headlines. Let's get your opinion on some of these. Unemployed or retired? I don't think that does the job, although it's probably truthful. Jeff is shaking his head no. Uh, retired? Yes, I'm retired, semi retired. So that's part of it, but it doesn't really convey who you are and convey value to another company. This one is seeking a new opportunity. It also tells what you're doing, but probably not very graphically in terms of what you're looking for. And that's what you want to do. We have a short attention span. So you want to try and target what people are looking for, what interests them. So something like formally VP of finance is much better. However, formally to convey is a kind of a negative and somebody's unemployed. Experienced media professional seeking a new opportunity is much better. It says that somebody has some experience, they're a professional in media, and they're open to new opportunities. But it doesn't really convey what it can do in that 120 characters. This one is a little bit more detailed and is a little more uh, informative about what somebody's looking for. Social media strategist and a content manager. Seeking a new opportunity, they have experience in both print and digital, public relations and marketing and corporate communications. Supply chain, the pipe character with a space on the other side. If you decide to use that pipe character, which is a shift key on the upper right hand side of your keyboard, just above enter on my keyboard as I look at it, and procurement and purchasing. It gives the recruiter or the reader an idea of what your background is, where your expertise lies. And that's what you're trying to convey in that 120 characters. Here's another one, senior accountant with general ledger. I mean, one of the abbreviations that you that you can use that's generally recognized is something like General Ledger, Accounts Receivable, AR or AP, CPA, some of those kinds of designations you can use abbreviations for. Otherwise, I don't recommend abbreviations like that. Executive Assistant is a pretty generic term by adding budgeting and event planning gives a little bit broader picture of what this individual is capable of and what they do. IT Project Manager, there are a whole number of those. If you do a search from that on the Dallas Fort Worth area, there's probably over 30,000. But by adding idle, which is a certification process, and scrum master, possibly agile, gives the recruiter or the hiring manager some buzzwords that identify with what you do. Here's another one. Here's somebody at the executive level, they're telling people that they have general management responsibilities, meaning that they probably manage large groups of people in the manufacturing industry or aerospace. So those are pretty graphic descriptions of what somebody does and helps them about. The next area that you want to talk about Here's your summary section or your about section. This one note at the top has an email address right at the top. Makes it real easy for somebody to click on that to send you an email. Has a pretty good description of what somebody with a financial planning and analysis background does. Notice that there's a blank space here between the last one and here. You want to break up a space. This is a lot of, a lot of text in about, about 10 or 12 lines right there. People after a while, and look, lose track of what they're reading. 
and we'll go on to the next one. But those are some other ones. Here's some other summaries that you can look at. Again, they're pretty descriptive. They are also using the first person. In resumes, we don't use the first person, but you can talk about yourself in the first person. I did, I'm a grateful partner, those kind of things. I'm a creative, strategic, hands-on marketer. Those are words that you can use. A little bit more personal, tells a little bit more about you in LinkedIn. Because LinkedIn, remember, is kind of static. Once it's there, you can't change it for every company that's, that you want to look at, much like you can when you send a resume and you can tailor a resume to the job posting that you've looked at. Skills and endorsements are vitally important, as I mentioned. When you get to that section over in the settings area, okay, or excuse me, down the page from that, you can add skills. You notice these here as journalism. If I clicked on that, uh, it would add journalism up here in the skills area. If I had another one like, like journalist, it could be another one. Sometimes if you start to type in right here what the skill is and it's not one recognized by LinkedIn, it won't let you add it. But you definitely want to have three. And LinkedIn, when it shows your profile, will display your top three skills and you can arrange them accordingly if you want. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Okay, the skills and endorsements. Okay, here's the, here's the top three for, I think these were for, for me. Again, the career counseling. Since I did that at Mullen International and also at Lee Heck Harrison. Again, I did executive search work. I knew Leslie Mason, who is with Intuit right now. She handles executive search there. And I've done recruiting. Gail Houston has mentioned there. She and I work on at the Career Transition Workshop. And we got to know each other back in the early 90s. When there's a group called the Southwest High Tech Cooperative, which was a group of technical recruiters as well. We move on and take a further look at skills and endorsements, how you arrange those on your profile. You notice here, these are the top three on my profile, career counseling, executive search, and technical recruiting. If I click this blue, this blue push pin, it will take that off and drop it down below. And if I want recruiting to appear there, I click this push pin as well. By moving over here to the three bars, you can arrange which priority, which one you wanna have listed first. Same thing here, and I have about 50 different skills on mine, and those are that you have. Most of them will have a number of rating, numerical rating after them. You can have up to 99 people recommend you for something like that or endorse you for that. Okay, is your profile really public? And that's what you wanna know if you're in a job hunting situation. So you can click on the settings and privacy there to find that out. And these are the options that you have there. Your account, your privacy settings, advertisement, your communication, and job seeking preferences. I mentioned job seeking preferences earlier. When you first set up that area, you can go to job seeking preferences and click on that. And it will allow you to choose five. Okay. Your public is your URL public, which is something like that. You notice up here on your home page, you have edit, put you edit your public profile and URL. The young man that I had this morning, had his name with dashes between and another dash and something, I think he had something CAM and then another dash and eight numbers. Well, again, you can use that for advertising or you can use a little bit of advertising if you're an MBA or a CPA. Uh, those are the things that you can add after that. You can also add after your name, but they don't recommend that for LinkedIn and they'll fuss at you if you do that. And like a CPA or, but if you were to put re real estate agent out there, I know Dennis O'Hagan, when he did that, they asked him to do, take that away, or otherwise they'll shut him down for 30 days. But when you click on your public profile, when you click on this one right up here, this is what shows up. Gail Houston has taken those out, but she can put Gail Houston Texas, Texas, because there are four other Gail Houstons in the United States. If it allows that and it hasn't been used previously, you'll get the green check mark. If you, somebody else has got that, like John Smith, that's one that's a pretty common name. You're going to have to add something else to that. So it's, it's yours and is personalized. The other settings that you may want to took like who can take a look at or who can see your email address. If you want to keep your email address private, the young man that I was talking to this morning, he's not in a job hunting mode, but he's in a mode where a lot of vendors would call on him. So if he accepts a, a contact from somebody, they will send him advertising material or, or information about the services that they provide. Who can see your connections? I would, if you're in a job hunting mode, I might turn that one to a change and make that just a few for few people that can see that you're perhaps your first degree connections, rather than those people that are out there like recruiters, 
because they can look at you and they, they can look at other people with a similar type background. I mentioned the job settings, job application settings, and our recruiters know that you're open to opportunities. If you click on this one, this one allows you to add up to five different job titles that, you, that you're interested in. Okay. So that's what you want to, one of the things that you want to do on that. The pipe character, as I mentioned, is on your keyboard. If you like that, you have to put a, a blank space on either side. If you use a backslash, again, a, back, a space on either side. Otherwise, it's not a searchable term. Or you can use a comma followed by a blank space. Those are just some tricks that you can do when you're using LinkedIn. Let's take another look at my profile. Because recruiters, like they do with resumes, spend usually six to 10 seconds looking at somebody's profile. They'll look at your picture. They'll tend to look at your, at your name and your, what your job interests are and your job opportunities. They might click on your contact information right here if you're a first degree connection or if you're open to connection right here. We'll take a look at some people. Notice on this one, I opened up to all LinkedIn members can see the job opportunities I might be looking for. The other things that you wanna have is your job preferences. And those are good for 90 days. After that, you'll have to renew them or change them. Again, it's like anything else on LinkedIn. The more you use LinkedIn, the greater, the higher the value for that section is as well in the terms of ratings as well. If you're currently unemployed, it's a good idea to have a current position there. And what do I mean by that? What have you been doing or what is it that you're looking for? Here's one for a project manager in the telecommunications space here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Again, this is a somewhat older slide. But again, he's currently working there. He updated his headline. His headline is project manager, seeking a position in telecommunications. That's within the 120 character limit. And a description of what he does. The brief description, he's got strong skills in project management and product management. Gives an idea of what the person is looking for in terms of the current position. You also get a higher value rating by having a current employment position listed, even though it's an unemployed and that you're looking for another position. You can also create job alerts. Once you've gone through the settings, you can do that, turn the radio button on here, and you can turn that, just click on it and drag it to the right, and it'll be on for these types of missions. This, these happen to be just for me. Well, how does LinkedIn sort recruiter searches? Recruiters buy a package called Recruiter or Recruiter Lite. They pay anywhere from $50 to $500 a month for that. Uh, the $500 a month gives them access to the, all of the seven, 500 or 650 million people that are on LinkedIn. Again, when they do that, LinkedIn is a value for every, every section of, that's there. High scores tend to move the top, all things being equal in different sections. The all-star status that we meet, and what I mentioned, having a complete profile. The gentleman this morning didn't have any details about the job they had on his last two positions. Prior to that, he'd gone into some detail of what he'd done and what some of his accomplishments were. But that's what recruiters want to know about. What have you done? What value do you bring to their company? If you have an exact match on the current job title, previous job titles or the job title in your headline, those are key. Having that job title in there, you might think is not something that you want, but again, it's a key factor. Open to new opportunities. Recruiters like low-hanging fruit, people that are looking. They don't want to have to go and try and persuade somebody. Although good recruiters will look at the best qualified candidate, other recruiters tend to look at, the, at those that match the qualifications and are interested in new opportunities. Keywords from your profession from the job posting. You know what they are. You need to include them both in your LinkedIn profile and different sections of that as well. Recruiters look at skills. What skills have you listed? And we'll take a look at a couple of searches in a minute. The recruiters have done so that you can see that. Geographic location. You've taught recruiters that you don't want to drive, most people don't want to drive more than 25 miles to work. So recruiters limit their search to 25 miles from a given location. That's why it's vitally important to put the location that you're looking at. Your, your zip code is one of the things that they use to locate that. Again, if you're open to other opportunities in other parts of the country, you need to say open to other opportunities around the United States or in New York or in Florida, wherever it is that you might be looking. 
and how many connections have you had? If you're a beginner on LinkedIn, you don't get quite as much credit as if you have a number of connections. And lastly, comments on posts, articles, and if you've written a blog or an article on LinkedIn. Those are the factors that LinkedIn sorts on. Okay, what do recruiters really look search for? First thing that they look at is job title. Job title are titles for your past and present positions. Those are in your headline and in your employment section. Next area that they look at is your keywords. What are the keywords for your, for your position, for your career field? What are the skills that you possess? What industries have you worked in? What's your education, what's your location, and the, the companies that you've worked for, your pedigree, if you will. And once they've narrowed down your search, they'll look more carefully at your summary and your employment history. But let's take a look at a couple of searches right now that recruiters have actually done. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice that this one, the recruiter was looking for a product manager or senior product manager in Seattle. They would consider somebody in, in San Francisco area and their skill set would be in product marketing and product, product management and have a, some other thing that he might be looking for was competitive analysis. This one also had, had the education or schools. This was from the University of Washington up in Seattle. You'll notice here that there were 6,900 total candidates that matched the qualification that they had listed. And of those, 460 of them were following the company's brand. So those were candidates who expressed more interest in that particular company. Let's take a look at one other one. This one is in the Chicago area. Somebody was looking for a project manager. A project manager in the Chicago area. Somebody had a back, I keep touching my keyboard, I shouldn't do that. Somebody had a background in business strategy analytics and and had other things. There were about 43,000 people on the that were candidates for this position, but only 900 of them were engaged in following the brand and had connections. And only 83 of those were open to new opportunities. So that vastly narrowed the search down. If you aren't open to opportunities, you can see what the recruiter is looking at. Narrow it down quickly in the funnel. They take a look at your profile as well. Okay, when you actually search for a job and the job search, when you click on the job search, hook, again, I touched that keyboard. Okay, you notice up here on the jobs tab, it opens up and you can search jobs and search location. If you put a title in here, type in a job title, and LinkedIn, as you start to type in CON, it might be construction or contracts or consulting. Those are the different ones that you can type in. It offers some artificial intelligence. If you click on any of those, in the drop down list, it will default to the United States for the location. So you do want to add a location if you can. Uh, and LinkedIn will offer suggestions for the location. And then you click on the search box up here. The next thing that you want to be aware of is on the features, features category. Again, once you've done your search, I like to suggest, and this is the latest version of the filters, I did this yesterday because they continue to update that. It offers some of the salary information right here is kind of new. This gives you some idea what the salaries are paying for those different jobs. That's very new and very valuable to you as well. The past week, I suggest that people narrow their search down to the past week, simply because the first response to a job posting on the internet is within the first three minutes. And there can be as many as three or 400 within the first hour. I know Gail Houston tells the story. She posted it for a project manager and had 300 within the first hour. And she cut, closed down her search. So you want to have a search that are fairly fresh. And unless your skill set is particularly unique, sometimes those will last for weeks and weeks. Or if a recruiter is looking for, for a particular type of person and they're continually looking for those in sales or consulting. I know when I was with Oracle Corporation, I left a bucket posting out there continually because I was always looking for consultants, could be anywhere in the country. There's some other features over here that you can look at this easy apply. I would use caution about that when you can do that. In some cases, it simply takes and <coughs> forwards your profile. Again, the profile is kind of static, so you can't tailor it to the posting. Again, others will allow you to post, or update, upload a resume as well as with that. Again, some of the other filters that are there. Oh, I want to go back a minute. The other filters, as you can see, most of the jobs are full-time. Some are contract. It has location of where they are. So if you aren't looking uh, 
you weren't looking on the Irving side of town, you might look Richardson or Garland. Again, you can see that some of the companies are listed and industries are specific as well. These are other filters. Again, once you've done that, if you said, no, I didn't get the right results, you can hit the clear button. It takes you back to your original search and then you can start to use the filters again. One other thing that you can do this used to, I used to tell people to use, this as a way to identify what the salary levels are. But again, LinkedIn just added that other field as well for salaries on the prior page. So, but this is a way that you can do that. But some people are looking for uh, different levels. An internship is usually somebody in, still in school, like an MBA candidate at SMU or somebody on a student visa. Entry level is just what it sounds like, coming right out of school. An associate is usually two to five years, mid seniors anywhere from four to 15 years, and a director and manager level as well. You can check as many of those as you want. You can create job search alerts. Again, simply by shifting the button up here at the top from left to right and turning that on. This is for a talent acquisition specialist. Before I would do that in this particular situation, I would want to say not worldwide, but I want to make it to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Because worldwide where there were about 200,000 people in talent acquisition or people that have that in their profile. The other thing about the first position, the tier, the description of it over here in the right column, and you can scroll down and see what the requirements are. It's an easy way to turn to determine whether you qualified for that. This is for a talent acquisition leader. Here's one for head of talent acquisition, talent acquisition partner. These are pretty senior level HR type positions. You can do people, you can optimize your search by looking at people. Okay, and when I say that, you can take a look at people that are have the recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And if you are showing up in the first 10 screens, that's approximately 10, that's approximately 100 thumbnail sketches of people. If you aren't showing up in that when you do a search, again, you wanna take a look at somebody like Christina, take a look at some of the verbiage in her profile, use some of that profile in your own profile to update your profile. See if you don't get a little bit higher ranking in that. You can do a people search at a company. In this particular case, was selected by company and then by Thompson Reuters was the company that I took in. You, there are 227,000 of people that have Thompson Reuters in their profile. That's a lot of people. So you want to narrow that down and you can do that by looking elsewhere at companies and clicking on the people. You can actually do a company search to find people. Again, Thompson Reuters was the example that I mentioned and you can look at those as well. You can look at that to find recruiters, okay, as well something that you can do. And once you've clicked on a company search, one of the things that you can do on that, once you've found that, if you follow up on that, it will allow you to take a look at where they live in the United States of that particular one, what subject they studied in school, where they went to college, what, operate, what functional area they're working in operation, where the, what they studied when they were in school. There's a lot more detail to play around with. This is a slide from Dirk Spencer. And when Dirk was out of, job, out of a job earlier this year, all he did was change his profile, he changed his title. You can see updated his, his title, Technical Recruiter IT Leadership Available Immediately, to IT Recruiter Available Immediately, Corporate or Contract. Again, got a job within about four weeks after he posted this, and made these changes, and that's all he did to change it. There's my LinkedIn email address. If you want the slide deck, just send me an email and I'll be happy to send it to you. Jeff, what I'd like to do now is turn it back to you and see if we can't take a look at some people's profiles. So, okay, let me, uh, if you want us to look at your profile, uh, just put your name in the chat box and I will look it up. Uh, please note and remember that this will be going out over Facebook and every place else. So. Um, you know, everybody will be, everybody will be able to see this. So, you know, Locke talked a second ago about how uh, I used a, a Wordle document right here. So you can see it right here in the middle in my head, in my banner. I added a copy of my book because that's a book I wrote. And then I put my email and phone number up here so that anybody who views my public profile would be able to see exactly what's going on here. So, okay, let's take a look at Alan's, uh, Alan Bergman. 
John Bergman. So here is Alan's profile. Where did he go, Jeff? Oop, because you started sharing again. I started sharing it. What do I need to do? You want me to? You want me to do this? Or you want to put the? Go ahead. In there? Do you do it, and I'll bring it up. So. Oh, you're gonna bring it up. Okay. Well, then you need to call up Alan Bergman if you're gonna. Okay. Okay. It's A L A N. Sorry, Alan. It's that first one right there, the first one there. You had it. Here we go. Alan's got a good one. He's got, again, see this over here on your analyst and data scientist? By putting that backslash in there with no spacey on either side of it, it does not make analyst data searchable, but will not show up when somebody does a search. So I suggest putting a a space between those, okay? Uh, if there are other areas uh, other than data scientists that you wanna put in there that you can do to grow business grants is fine. He has contact information, so I'm able to see him. He's open to work, he's done that, which is something new with, with LinkedIn. If you do that, you have to be careful that it doesn't crowd out your picture. Alan has got a good smile, but it kind of cuts off the left side of his face there on that particular one, okay? You take a look further down, he's open to work, Open to work, which is a is a is a Twitter hashtag that you can do, and you can see all the details of that. In his case, he's open to Dallas Fort Worth. You can add locations. And notice he's also able interested in Seattle or Vancouver, British Columbia. Okay, and taking a look at, we can recommend him. I just recommended him for that. Okay. It will show up on his recommendations. Okay, he's got some activity. That's good. So these activities are there. He's, he's got some a good description of what he does at Ansara as a full-time marketing science director. Again, I would add a, a current position since he's been gone from there for, for about over a year, Alan. I would add a current position of what it is, what that you're looking for, okay? He's got some accomplishments, Benjamin, there. He demonstrated customer attrition over eight consecutive quarters in a rent-to-own situation. He demo what it, he's demonstrated, what did that demonstrate to the client? Would be my, my only question about that, okay? So he has a good background. He's got a background, a PhD from U University of Texas at Austin. Uh, Notice his three skill sets that he has here, his marketing research, market survey marketing, quantitative research. He probably has at least others because you can see that by clicking show more. Again, that's what you want to do. The other thing I'm about, I'll mention about his about section, I have to click on see more to try and find that. The other thing I'll mention, he's divided this up and broken it up by using narrative or sentences type here. And he's also used bullets to break up that section as well. Again, the one contact that I would make about the, the about section is to add your contact information in the top two lines here. Make it easy for somebody to reach out to you. Is that helpful, Alan? Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's look at another one. Do you want to look for a job for Alan? Well, we've got somebody else who... Uh... Okay. Give me a name. Oh, uh, next name, Peter Blanchard. B-L-A-N-C-H-A-R-D. There you go. Okay, Peter's got that open to work and notice he's, he's, he's faced it, he's used his picture so that it doesn't cover up his face. He's got servant leader who builds cohesive teams. That's great, Peter. I would suggest using that more, like I mentioned in the other headlines. What is it that you do? What industries are that you're working at? You've got my attention for six to 10 seconds and the servant leader is great. Successful cohesive teams means you've had some success. You're an honest communicator. You work hard and willingness to roll up the sleeves. What do you do? Yeah, I don't, yeah, you need to have what, a job title there because. What industries have you worked in? What's your profession? 
you know, give a side some idea of the level that you're at, what industry you're looking at. Here he mentioned executive director, administrator, vice president of sales. So I have something he's had sales management experience. He's managed a group of people. Okay. The about section. Notice he's got his contact information here. I would tend to move that up at the top, but that his about section, he's used about 150 characters. You've left about 850 characters that you can tell more information about that. What are the things that you've done? What are some of the accomplishments that you've made? Okay, he has, a, he has at least through May of this year, again, what I would do there, I would add a current position. What is he looking for in terms of senior living type of thing or, or assisted living? Those are the kinds of things that I would, I would mention there are healthcare, health services. Peter, other than that, it looks pretty good. Questions from Peter. Feel Thanks, on. Locke. Okay. Uh, question here. Any advice on what to, uh, Lori's asking, any advice on what to put in the cover photo? So I imagine she's talking about the banner. The background photo here? That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Okay. Jeff has got something with Wordle. If we take a look at me real quick. I have to go to speaker view. You notice no. on, on, on mine, in terms of I've got a background photo, this is a picture I took of my wife when we were in the Caribbean down in Aruba. And I liked it, it's one of those where you took your camera and went aside, but you can go to Google and find background photos for LinkedIn if you do a job search. There's also a great website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. You can go there and just type in that you're looking for LinkedIn banner and it has a ton of different banners that you can then go and adapt it just so you have something different. You want something different, something that talks about who you are. Um, you know. I like Jeff's, Jeff also had and his, he's got his contact information is there. So you can add that and play around with that. Again, I'm not proficient with that, but Jeff can probably give you some pointers as well. Right. Uh, let's see here. Somebody, oh, somebody, Patty's saying, I have an executive boardroom on my profile to portray the image that I want to project. And she also said, you can go to canva.com to get free LinkedIn banners there. Um, can we take a look at Albert Stadler? Albert Stadler, S T A, no, S T A D L E R. S T. I'm sorry. Albert S T. Got it. Stadler. And his question was, he says, how do I activate the URL contact information? Well, you have it there, Mitch. Uh, Albert, it's there. Yeah, let's look at his. I'm, I'm really confused. Okay, here I, is your... And I log in uh, I, and I do not see it. Somebody else told me they don't see it. Well, what you want to do is go to your setting up in your Oh, uh, there's a there's a chance that maybe you only have it set up for first degree connections. So That's you might want to go and make sure you open that to all. So you'd want to go into edit your profile and make sure that your contact information is open to everybody. Well, this this one for Albert conveys the image of of green energy right. with solar panels there and the wind turbines. Again. Um, his contact information. He's got a phone number on it. You don't need to have your street, I mean, your zip code, although you can add that. That's what the recruiters use. That's the criteria that when searches are done, that's where that comes from. Okay, and he's got an email address as well. Looking down below, got his information there. Project leader, happy customer. Again, I'm gonna have to see more to do that, okay? So I'm, I'm, I would put, rather than happy customer, repeat sales, I'm, I might add that green energy again. Again, this is, this is a lot of, this is a lot of text all in one place. I would break that up, add a, add a carriage return right here, 
at the end of perseverance and team lead, if, if nothing else, okay, to make it easier to read because our line, we tend to follow it from here to here very quickly. What you want them to do is to slow down and actually look at each different section. Okay, he's got his, looks like his resume is here. Yep. Which is okay, the only difficulty with that is that resume can't be tailored. And again, it's not showing all of his, his resume. Yeah, I recommend that you do not put your resume on LinkedIn, but if you have a one page bio, that's a very effective tool. And that's something that it's a high level document that maybe would get somebody to call you. And then you know what to put in a resume. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So here, can we stay here for just a second? Because some the next question I have here from Courtney was if you're currently unemployed, what should we put for a current position? So here's a perfect example of what to put down. So you're putting down a couple job titles of what it is you're looking for. I guess looking for a job must be the company name. I would, I would add, again, since your expertise is in, in clean energy and that's the area that you have, that's not in that current position title. You're looking for a job, you're looking for more than a job, I hope. I hope you're looking for a career opportunity, you're looking for a new opportunity. It's a more positive statement than simply looking for a job. Nothing wrong with looking for a job because we've all done that. And what you can also do underneath where you've got, you know, you've got two lines there saying providing project management experience, go ahead and put down a couple bullet points of some results. What are the biggest results? What do you want to talk about? What is it you're going to bring to the table to get, to get somebody to go, oh, yeah, looking for an opportunity. Yeah, I need somebody who can do those things for me. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, somebody says, what's the, uh, the Pacific size requirement for the banner? You can Google that. Uh, and Canva can also, Canva will have it on there. I don't, just Google LinkedIn banner size and it'll tell you exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, how do you change the settings or notifications while changes are being made in the profile so my network doesn't get bombarded by all the change notifications? Okay, well, let's, let's see if I can go to mine, Jeff. Okay. I'll go to the view profile. I'm going to move you down, Jeff, if I can. Where are the settings one, Jeff? Oh, right there. Uh, you just were there. Uh, wasn't it right? Uh, not yet. Yeah. This is your public profile you're looking at. You just have to play around with that in terms of that, what's public and what's not. If there is a setting in the settings area over there when you have that. Okay. And it's your public profile. And below that, I believe there's something. When you click on this, It allows you to do that, but there's a setting in there where you don't, where you turn off notifying my network. Here's what it says. I can't, I can't find it right now without spending more time on that, Jeff. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Just trying to see what other questions we have here. Um, what do you put? What do you put in if you're out of work for a year? 
again, notice the can the slide that I had that I had the gentleman had out been out of work since 2017. What is it that you've been doing? Recruiters want to know what you've been doing since your last full-time gig. If you have any volunteer experience, that's something that you can add as well. It's something that you can add on a resume. Again, that says that you have an interest in an area that you're working on. Or if you've taken continuing education to update your skills, that's something else that you can put in there in that section. Right. Uh, Randy asked, uh, I've turned on open to new opportunities, but my profile is not showing it. What, uh, what can I have done wrong? Well, if he, once you've done that open to new opportunities, like in mine, again, uh, the open to new opportunity, open to work, by clicking on that, it gives me a chance to change some of the job preferences that are there, that blue pencil. You can add a title. If it's a title that's recognized by, by LinkedIn, you'll do that. You can do, add location. Partic this is particularly helpful for people who are looking in other parts of the country. And what is your current job status? Immediate or flexible on browsing. And if you go down just a little bit farther right there, who, can, uh, who sees that you're open? If you click on that down arrow right there, that will, that's where you, if you share with recruiters only, only recruiters will see the information. But if you click the, up at the top, then the, you'll get the green banner around your name and around your picture. And that's how everybody will see that you're looking. Notice if you click on LinkedIn members, it has that banner there, okay? That's a choice that you need to make about that. I mean, if you're out of work, you might as well turn it on because you want people to find you. The habits set for recruiters only, you do that when you're employed and you're looking for a new job, just trying to let other recruiters know that you're out looking. Okay. Uh, okay, I see. I, I needed to turn it on to everyone, not recruiters, and then the banner appears. That's the step I missed. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Any other questions? I don't. I don't really see anything else in the chat box. Anybody interested in looking for a job that wants to put it in there? Yeah, give us a give us a company name you're looking for, and we'll uh, we'll do a search for you. Holiday retirement. I'm sorry, holiday. Holiday retirement. That's a company name, but we'll do it anyway. And you're open anywhere, Peter? I am. Okay, well, I'm going to notice if I do that and I put United States or I can choose anywhere if we want anywhere. We'll do the search. Again, holiday retirement. Here's some. VP of sales. Okay. Notice, but I didn't have that any ones that are there. VP or v, Vice President are the same thing. Again, I selected Texas this time. We're going to go this way. There are 480 results. One of the things he's going to want to do because he's interested in a given field, a given per, that is, is, is this one right there, that filter. And you're only looking at, at, The other filter that we didn't look at, Peter, on that, which is critical, notice that those are anytime. Recruiters sometimes get lazy and don't do that, but if I click past week, there are four jobs that are available. Okay, if that's too, too restrictive, I can go back to the clear and start with my VP of, the, of sales, in the United States, or if I have VT of Again, just by playing around with your search terms that you notice a couple of others that are available. Again, some of these are protects, like salesforce.com is probably selling the Salesforce application into that community of large enterprises. 
Another job request. All right, let's take, uh, here's a uh, target to see here. Somebody's looking for a project management in e-learning. Thanks, Locke. Okay. I'll choose Dallas for them, but again, again, I would want to take the filters in this case to narrow it down, but because that's a rather unusual profession, most of those jobs, 24 of them are still in the last week, uh, last month. And with the, what's going on with COVID-19, there are some that are available. You'll just have to sift through some of them, different ways that you can sift with the filters. There's a particular industry that somebody was interested in. We mentioned e-learning. I've got most of these are at least two weeks old. This is probably a contract kind of position. Sorry, how did you get into the filters? Was that by clicking all filters? Clicking all filters? No, I'm sorry, how did you get it? Okay, that's how you get into the filters, by clicking all filters? Yeah, and if, I, if the filters are too strict, and I want to just clear it, keep my original search, I take it away. And if your salary level, this is something new, doesn't have any salary level, so none of these jobs that are posted had any, any job salary with them. Or, Project learning anytime with the anytime in the last month. So none of the jobs posted had any salary data with them, Raj. Yeah, I see that. Thank you. Okay, somebody else looking for a job. Can Awfully quiet that? audience. One other little hint that I've heard that's uh, sort of new is that uh, if you're using the app on your phone, on your Android or uh, iPhone, there's an option for you to record your name. So if you have an unusual sounding name, you don't need to do it if you're John Smith or, you know, something. But if you have an unusual last, uh, unusual name, you can sit and record your name. That way a recruiter will know how to pronounce your name um, and it'll show up with a little speaker next to your name. But just use your name. Don't try to put any other kind of sales information on there. Good suggestion, Jeff. Um, somebody said a National Park Service. National what? National Park Service. While you're looking that up, somebody also said, I've heard not to use recording feature due to security issues and artificial intelligence. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. We're not telling you you have to do it. I'm just telling you there's an option to do it if you feel like you'd like to do that. Once again, if I was on my name, if I had an unusual sounding name on my resume, I would probably put a phonetic spelling next to my name so that people, when they're looking at my resume, would have an idea how to pronounce the name. Particularly if your name is a little more difficult to pronounce. Right. Okay, for our National Park Service, nothing. That didn't draw any jobs. Oh, you need to clear clear your filters. There we go. Good thought. Again, again, this is where they are. What I would do now with my filters. Let's see how current they are. Well, most of those jobs are about, I guess about 25% of them are more current. This one just was posted yesterday. Okay. Again, you can see the level. One of the things that you can do with filters is to choose your level. Notice that at least five of those jobs were pretty high paying jobs. That's a new feature. They must have picked it up because they're competing with Indeed.com on that kind of a feature. That's a, that's a great job in San Francisco, by the way. Port Mason is a beautiful facility out there. Okay, anybody else? 
somebody said an SAP business analyst in Tarrant County. Well, notice it had some artificial intelligence, but by clicking that, notice it kept it to the United States. So we're going to enter. Okay. One of the other things is I've got to clear my filters on that one. And it brought up three results. Okay. The thing that I would want to know on that, since that's a fairly common job, those are at least, most of those jobs are at least 30 days old. Well, it was just a quick look. Again, here's an idea of what kind of salary levels they were at. That's not an absolute, but that's just a guide. And this is something new that, that LinkedIn is just starting to play with. Two of the jobs were in Fort Worth, one's in Grapevine. Okay. Other questions? A good question on this SAP business analyst. I wouldn't have thought to search quite that that fine. That's a very narrow search. If I just take out the and search that way, ups it to 126 jobs. So again, what words you put in narrow, what narrows your filter down to that? It's kind of like a funnel. Well, Locke, thank you uh, very, very much. Uh, we're coming up, uh, we're just past two o'clock here. So I wanna thank uh, Locke a lot for his presentation today. Uh, for those people who are in the military, uh, I was alerted a couple weeks ago that LinkedIn is offering one year of LinkedIn premium for job seekers. If you've been in the military, if you're a vet, if you're currently in the military, if you're a veteran, uh, just go to www.veterans.linkedin.com. The only prerequisite is that you must list your military service in your LinkedIn profile. Again, Jeff, if anybody wants the presentation, it's Locke Alderson, all one word, at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to send it to them. Great. Some of the other programming we have going on with Career DFW and Career USA, uh, tomorrow at one o'clock, uh, we're gonna have our second session of uh, Interviewing Wednesday, how to prepare for a specific interview and how networking works. On Thursday, we'll be doing our effective resume class at one o'clock. Uh, you're welcome to submit a resume. I think we have an opening for one more resume to take a look at. Uh, if you'd like to cover over, you can get rid of the uh, header information so we don't know who you are, but uh, at least we'll look at the details and we'll do some, uh, share some resume tips. And I think we're gonna sort of concentrate on ATS systems. Uh, that's what uh, I've, I've been told Carol's been researching the last few days. So uh, it'll probably be ATS heavy. And then this Friday, uh, at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. Uh, we're gonna talk about kingdomality. Where is it that you fit in the kingdom? And we ask that if you do come to the session Friday morning, that you, that you go take the test at kingdomality.com. Uh, write down what it is. You'd be one of 12 different things. It's sort of a fun way to look at how do you fit with other people. So our speaker has used this uh, at different jobs that he's done. He's gonna relate how he's used it as a manager and how you can use it as a coworker to sort of see how to get the most out of other people. Uh, these sessions have been recorded. We'll be on the Career DFW Facebook page. You can go back and review it as many times as you'd like. It'll also be on the Career USA YouTube channel in a couple hours. I'll upload it here in about an hour. Please check each page, subscribe to both. We really would appreciate it. Uh, if you're going to the YouTube channel, uh, when you go to your Career USA YouTube channel, if you click with the blue arrow as it says playlist, up will pop uh, one of six different playlists that have been created. And underneath that where it says LinkedIn with a red arrow is you clicked on playlist and you'll be able to see all the different sessions that are up there. So please note the Career DFW is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. All of our speakers, including myself, we're all volunteers. Locke's a volunteer, I'm a volunteer. We're just trying to help you get your next great opportunity. Uh, we survive on donations. We hope that when you do land your next great opportunity, you'll remember us, uh, make a donation so that we can continue what we're doing to help people around the United States and in the DFW area. And if your company happens to offer matching donations, your new company, uh, please be sure to look up Career DFW and allow your donations double in value. And if you don't see us on the list, contact me and I will get the name on the list because 
I've done it a couple of times in the past for other people and we really appreciate the, uh, you know, your donations doubled in value. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Have a great rest of the, uh, great rest of Tuesday. Locke, once again, thank you very, very much. Thank you and for having me. We'll see everybody hopefully later this week.